Hi, this is the second part of the uh, material photo mapping modeling tutorial. Bit of a, a gobful this, but uh, let's crack on. So I've created some layers in the in the this uh, AutoCAD drawing for the various components. This is the the key to getting this thing to work. The having an object in the model called Mapper uh, helps you kind of get the right size for for the mapping of the photograph once it gets into 3D Studio. Okay, so this is the, th the AutoCAD part of the, the tutorial. So um, I'm just going to keep layer zero current at the moment. I'm going to bring in the, the, the photograph. Okay, so I'll insert, then attach, and the photo's lurking on the desktop. Uh, it should be called Photo Material. Pretty big image. Uh, don't worry about scale, size, or anything just now. Just bung it in and OK, click somewhere and you just drag, it's just going to size it, we don't know what size at all yet so just drag OK, now what I'll do is, is try and get this to uh, a, a reasonable size now let's say this is 8 meters across, so that's maybe a bit big, or maybe well as you say, 1.5, 2, so that's Three and two, maybe maybe six meters across. Say, so let's scale this up. So SC, pick the object, return, base point, it is the end point, and then we'll use a reference scale. So R return, reference length is from the base point to the far end of the photograph, and then the size we want is six thousand. Okay, we see it now. Right, now I'm going to change to the mapper layer, make that current, and I'm going to draw a 3D face, just simple 3D face over the top of this object. So remember you've got four corners, so that's one, two, three, four, and return. So I've got my 3D face object sitting there. Now we only need to model half of this because it's symmetrical, so uh, I'm just going to go back to one of the the main layers here, and I think I'll I think I'll do the windows shape first. These are going to be kind of the very backmost shape object. So let's go for windows, and I'm going to start off by drawing a polyline, which I'm then going to region. So a polyline is going to be from the middle, so it's a mid of the photograph. I put ortho on, so it goes vertically. I'll take the grid off in the background there, no need to keep that on. And I'm going to take it up to this point and then ortho off. And well, actually, I need to come up a wee bit higher, actually, a wee bit higher. So let's come up with ortho on. I'm just going to come over the top of the keystone there. Okay, then ortho off. And going to go round and you can see where I'm, I'm picking is is just on the good bit of stone I'm trying to avoid the the underside of the of the archway there of the voussoirs okay bring that round I'm trying to keep the about the same distance onto the stonework all the way around. Okay, in the final segment here, I'm going to do vertical. So I'll put ortho back on. Okay, so there is going to be a little step in here. So I'm going to take it to to the top of that shape. Then I'm going to try and get in line with that. So I'm going to step in and come down the side of that pier. Now I'm going to take it right down to perpendicular to the bottom here. So PER to there. And then close the shape. So just let's see, closes the shape. So I'll do that to the other window and then we'll resume we'll resume recording at that point. Okay, I've regioned but I haven't regioned it, I've just polylined the other window as you can see if I hold hold the pan command down. Okay. 
and then we'll do the the keystones so let's change to the keystones layer and I want a polyline and I'm going I'm purposely going to pull this a bit further down onto the uh, onto the onto the window as well actually just just a wee bit further down here just so there's a small a small overlap okay take it across to here up to this point so ortho off just overlapping the main shape there to the nearest point here then I need to get back perpendicular to the green line there and then close the shape Okay, I'll do the same on the other keystone I'm going to start over here right on the keystone not on the dark bit on the trying to stay on the light part of the shape on the kind of full color of the stone Put ortho off there ortho back on across to that side and then the letter C to close the shape okay now the uh, the main parts of the arch needs to be a, a, a direct trace of what's below it. So if I change to the uh, to the voussoirs layer, which is the the arches, and basically trace over what we've got here. So I can go from intersection there, and then pick up endpoints. I missed one already. I'm looking for endpoints as I go along that polyline some of the angles between the shapes are a bit gentle so they're a bit difficult to see there must be one in there there it is yeah okay bring it around one more probably yep yeah, there it is okay and then I'm going to take this across then up around this arch Okay, we can't really get away with kind of offsets and things because it's it's all dependent on the photograph. It's not it's not my choice where these lines go as it usually is. Okay, and then I have to change to kind of freehand for the main shape here. Probably two changes of direction there across with the ortho on and then pick up this arch maybe gone too across too far just a portion there okay then up around this arch I'm trying to keep away from the kind of grotty grimy bit that's a bit nondescript okay bring it along to the keystone got a nearest point there and then close that shape Okay, and we'll do the same for the other arch. So we'll res Okay, that's the the main arch is drawn as you can see if I hold. Uh, I did make a, a small correction in this area, uh, which you may notice. What I'm gonna do now is fill in this area with a polyline tracing over. So we'll resume the uh, video in just one second. Okay, the uh, tile area has been defined. You can see here and then the last area to do is the kind of piers or pilasters that we've got here uh, so I'll just create a, a fresh layer for those and uh, keep it in uppercase like the rest pilasters and let's give it a color something we haven't used make it current okay and these are these have got a bit more shape. There's a bit more kind of going on with these, so I have to do these a bit more carefully. So I'm going to trace them with a bit more care for the shape. Okay, and we we'll come down to the edge here. Go across to the other side. And ideally, this would be symmetrical, so I'm going to flip this over if possible. Well, I'll bring it.
bring this line back to its midpoint. I'm going to flip this one over using mirror. Just join the across the top. And then we'll use the pedit command, which is PE, to join those polylines together. So J for join, pick the polyline. That should be usable. Okay, and then I need a rectangle in that position. Okay, now ideally the pilaster would be the same size on the other side. We'll just see if that fits the bill. Okay, not too bad, yeah. Uh, if I chop off the side there, I can snip that off and then fillet that onto the rest of the polyline. And then again, another rectangle that just needs stretched across. then a rectangle down to the corner. Okay, so we've got all the shapes we need and we can now start extruding and pulling and pushing. So now we can flip over into 3D. We don't actually need the photograph anymore at all. So we can remove that using the image command, shortens to IM, and click the photo and detach it. Okay, I'll do that. I'll just do that again. I am bring it onto the screen so you can see it. Okay, there's the there's the image. You can right click it and detach. Close the dialog box. All right, we've we've sized this. We've resized it to six thousand, so everything's kind of real sized now. So uh, take each layer in turn. So I'm going to grab the windows layer and then region those. So using the region command, so it's reg, pick the two green shapes and return. I think I'll put this into a shaded so I can see what's happening. So let's have shaded. Okay, the mapper object is kind of clouding things there, so I'm just going to turn that off. Okay, then let's say the, uh, we'll use the extrusion command now. Uh, let's say the, the depth of the, the arches is 150. So I'm going to extrude both of those. I'll, I'll make that the current layer, it, and then extrude both of these by 150. Okay, that's pretty deep, but I'm going to be pulling this further out as well. Okay, then extrude the. We'll change to the keystones layer, and we'll extrude those. by 175. I'll extrude. I don't need to extrude the, the tiling, uh, but I do need to move it. So I'll move it forward by, I think, 100. Then we'll region that. Okay, it's starting to build up now. Okay, so quite a deep window reveal there. And then I'll change to the to the plasters layer. Now I'm not modeling I'm not giving these as much shape as they really deserve, but they'll be they'll look okay. So we'll extrude these the same amount as the uh, as the keystones. Uh, maybe a touch more. So I'm gonna extrude these by uh, one uh, what we'll do so it's one seven five of the keystones, so say two hundred say 210 for that ledge okay and then we'll do the the main pilasters by the same as the as the arch say 125 now that looks like it could do with being out a bit further actually so let's extrude those by 150. That looks reasonable. Okay, bit crude, 
but uh, we'll, we'll do the trick. Ah, I, maybe those uh, ledges are out a bit too far, but no, it's just quickly for the for the uh, tutorial. Now this needs to be on its on its on its end. So I'll put put the mapper layer back on. Okay, and we need to get to the right hand side coordinate system. It's flipped around now. Now we can rotate. Grab the whole object, return, base point anywhere you want on that bottom line, and pull it up. Now this is a stage where you would put your coordinate system back to to normal and and place this in its proper place on on the building. Okay. Final job to do here is to mirror everything across to the other side, and that's the model ready to export. So that's the end of the AutoCAD section of the uh, tutorial.